Welcome. Very special episode, Dr. James Beckett Sports Card Insights. What you know from the title is that I'm here with Rich Klein. What you don't know is that Rich and I are both masked up due to COVID. And uh, we've got a screen separating us, so our usual uh, rapport may be tested, but uh, we, we go way back. Uh, thanks, sponsors. Top Spinning the Upper Deck, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, as well as ComC, Rich's employer, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike State Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions. So great sponsors, and I uh, hope they're taking necessarily necessary precautions to be safe and healthy. Rich and I are. I want to begin by apologizing to Rich for not being very sensitive at the show we went to a few weeks ago where I I wasn't the only guy that wasn't masked up, but I took my own kind of precautions of staying away from, you know, put, putting air uh, into the middle of the room. I was kind of facing against the wall, but still, uh, I didn't take as many precautions as Rich did and as, as Rich has commented. They, they, a lot of people were were pretty cavalier. I actually was, it's the most antisocial I've ever been at a card show in my life. So I think I was safe, but I was rude. So anyway, Rich, welcome to the show. Thanks. We're going to talk about cards that uh, there's more there than, than meets the eye. If you just look at the uh, line in the price guide, sometimes it just says it's a certain player's card, but sometimes there's other players or celebrities on that card, frequently, especially in basketball. So welcome to the show, Rich. Thanks, Jim. And what <coughs> is your take on this? Because you're getting a second uh, dip in the sense of, of you and I being so involved in the cataloging and of the, the the Beckett price guides and the cataloging there and trying to identify you know, why one card might be worth more than another. And then now you're getting a chance to do that within the ComC uh, database, and you're actually going through and, and noting some of those. And sometimes people send us notes we got a card the other day, and I want to say it's like a rookie standout Tom Gugliotta card where Michael Jordan's covering him. That's pretty cool. And that's Michael Jordan during his playing career, and he's just on a card, and he's doing whatever Michael Jordan does. And back in the day in baseball, we had things like the 1983 Topps Reggie Smith card with Ryan Sandberg coming into first base. Pete Rose is on the background, I believe, of the Chris Short card. There's a 71 Topps Buddy Harrelson where Nolan Ryan is obviously on the mound. There's And when I look at those cards in terms of Com C, I always try to note the second player because there are player collectors that are so intense that they say, okay, so-and-so's on that card, I want to buy it. Yeah, well, there's two kinds of these background celebrities. Some, like Michael Jordan, are so uh, well-known, uh, even though there are some famous examples where Michael's not wearing 23, so you can't necessarily go by the... So we're not talking about a snippet or these just slightly there, but he's very visible and very identifiable. And even in Com C and many of the other places where you can see the card, you don't know to search for it. If, you, if it's not notated that Michael Jordan is also on that card for Co Tom Gugliotta. There are way more Michael Jordan collectors than there are Tom. Exactly. That's Tom why Jordan. I noted that. And the one you're referring to is the Sam Vincent Hoops card where he's wearing uniform number 12. Right. And the NBA at the time, I believe, made Hoops change that card, not because if Michael Jordan was on the card, but because he wasn't wearing number 23, which, because it was a fluke because that was the game somebody stole his uniform. Yeah. And they just had to pull, he had to wear, yeah. And of course, now you wonder if that number 12 uniform is ever going to show up on the secondary market. <laughs> It, it, there could be a number 12 uniform showing up on the secondary market, photo matching it may be another story. It's not unique to football, I mean to basketball. It seems to happen a little bit in football when somebody's sacking a quarterback or somebody's, uh, they're tackling a certain the runner. The Fred Dean 1984 Tops card shows him tackling or Dan Marino on the right. card. Which would be like a quasi-rookie. Like, quasi-rookie. To me, that's a, just as cool as a card as the... Leaders card, I believe, in '84 that has Marina on it, or the inaction card. Those are those. That's a very cool card. You know, back in the late '70s and uh, and early '80s, before Fleer was up and running in uh, anything other than baseball, there were the teams in action cards, and they're fraught with these kinds of. They, they, I think they were not permitted to name the players on the fronts of the cards, but they're very identifiable, even though they're formational kinds of you know multiplayer pictures. It's pretty obvious who the star of the show is. Correct. And again, if I see one. During the course of my ComC work, I now identify the player because you're going to have more people. And I'll, I'll try to phrase this delicately. You'll probably have more. Actually, we'll go to a better example. If Walter Payton's on the card, you'll probably have a better luck selling a Walter Payton card than just saying Chicago Bears. Right. Well, Rich, are you recommending that people make work for you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm all in favor of that. I mean, I... So you heard it, fans. If, if, if you see something and you'd like to... I mean, Rich is it's one of the things I think Rich really enjoys doing. And frankly, I enjoy doing as well, because I think the, the hobby is... 
is uh, multifaceted, but when you're a, when you're a player collector, I think it's still of interest, even if it's a common card otherwise. But if it's got a prominent display of your favorite player, you, you want to add that to your collection in many cases. Too. And it so. doesn't always have to be. And I'm going to switch for a second. A card like our, our mutual friend Eddie Kelly, when you know, sold a lot of photos, and when he'd get new photos and he'd post them on his site, there'd be a guy chasing photos of anybody who ever played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And sometimes he could spot somebody and say, number 62, no, I need him. That's Dan Golick or something like that. But he doesn't have another. He, doesn't he have has no cards. Card. He has yeah. no ways. Send, you know, can you please make me one of those photos, you know, to, so I can have it. So there's other ways of getting really cool things of players you may never have thought about otherwise. But that's really not. Uh, that's not superstar oriented. Well, I know, but it's, it's even probably not. I mean, to me, when, when, when we were working together, that you, you had to have some sense of this is above the line, this is below the line. If, Absolutely. If it's a Michael Jordan, you'd want to catch those. Right. And, and Dan, if it's Dan, Dan, Danny G, no, it's just, it's for that one guy. No, and you're not going to. might know it on his own. Right. After all, all the cards are, are available to, to, to look through the pictures. You know, one of the challenges we had in the old, uh, back at publications days when, when we weren't as uh, database oriented in, in, at least in the, 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 uh, the publishing software we were using back, uh, you know, when I was uh, most heavily involved, we, it was, we were trying to cram everything into one line per, per, per card. And so that limitation uh, did not allow, especially in the magazine and even the books, there was some challenge there. ComC doesn't have that, though. They have a different orientation. We do, but I I sort of cheated and and changed the rule a little so I could do that. I put the Michael Jordan, covered by Michael Jordan, what's technically called the variation line to make it easier to read. So You made it like it's an uncorrected error. Right. Yeah, I I basically did it that way. And there's there's a very nice man named John who is very supportive of ComC. You know, he criticizes us when he feels it's valid to him. So people like that, we really appreciate and he caught the very first time I ever did that and posted it on the blowout boards. And I emailed him and I said, that's why I did it. He goes, you know what? That makes sense. He did kudos, right? Yes. <laughs> and I said, instead of having to read the long line, it becomes much simpler to, and frankly, it was simpler for me. And that's what, and, and I'm going to tell you that I wasn't breaking the rule for anybody but me. So I could do, you know, you know, you've heard Tim, our CEO talk when he came to your dinner about how he wants to do things for him. Well, within the database, I was doing things for me. <laughs> but you're, you're not typical, but you're, 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 you represent the collector that appreciates the detail. Absolutely. For sure. So, but uh, like I said, I, I, looking back in the day, and I, I think we were, I felt prohibited from doing that, even though you were on the team, you were aware of these things. We just had some limitations that are, that are uh, not there as much for Com C. And right. And, and, and like, good. for example, I mean, I know before I got there in 1989, one of the big ones was the Kirby Puckett upper deck card with Mark McGuire playing first base. That was huge because, both of them were very popular at that exact moment. And I think the Beckett listing was Kirby Puckett with McGuire or something like that in the price guide. Well, we could fit that on a line, I guess. Yes. But it's, uh, but it, and it was, it did contribute to increased demand for that card. And so to explain why that card would be more than you'd otherwise think it would be, that would, that would be helpful. And, you know, and I also do something, and this is a little different. There's some, we'll, we'll, we'll call him Jimmy Warren in 68 Tops football. He's on the Miami Dolphins, I believe, but he's wearing a San Diego Chargers uniform. So I actually have now noted when it's an obvious uniform difference as well, just to note that, hey, he's wearing the uniform, even though it's several years later. And not airbrushed. Well, and not airbrushed. And, obvious, and not changed colors. And not changed the colors. If it's so they didn't obvious, do anything to it. They didn't do anything to okay. it. If it's so obvious, I do that. And again, that's... Hey, well, it? It, it, my rule was if it significantly would contribute to understanding the value and the demand for the card, then it'd be helpful to put it there. But what you're pointing out is not just the celebrities or other stars in the background. There's also other aspects of the photo, such as, a, well, like, an, like I said, an uncorrected error or a different a team that is not the real team. Or in some cases, it's the player's first appearance on a team. Yes. Which that actually does have some impact. Especially back in the day when they were. Especially back in the day. And that, to me, that's a bigger driver in baseball and football. Well, in baseball. baseball, baseball mainly, but basketball is where you're really getting a lot of these, you know, the defense, the, who's playing defense on this player's card because basketball is a much smaller league. The, the stars get a lot of court time and photographer time. In fact, the photographers are sitting there for those listeners who, who used to go to, to NBA games or other games. The photographers are right there. Well, where, who are they tracking? They're not trying tracking Tom Gugliotta. 
right. as much as they are Michael Jordan. But if they get the, so they, they're submitting their photos and it needs to pr- probably predominantly show the player that's, that's named, but it doesn't have to exclusively show because I think some of these pose shots are not as interesting. No. And a matter of fact, Tops must have had somebody in the Baltimore, Washington area do their basketball photography because what's unsold seems to show up in the background of a ton of 70s basketball. Well, there's another explanation for that, Rich. Yes. Wes Unseld was the widest player <laughs> in the NBA, okay? <laughs> and you know he what? could be in a lot of pictures. He was heck, God rest his soul. Yes, he was a heck of a player. And <laughs> a, a heck of a player. And a really Outlet good. passer, he flicked it like 100 <laughs> yards or something. Yes. Oh, boy. I love, I, you know, I love watching him play because he was an honest player. They don't, you know, they talk about length, they talk about height, but they don't talk about width. He had and the, the width. displacement that he had when he was when he was boxing you out, you weren't getting it around him. And I know that had to be part of Charles Barkley's success, but but Unseld was was an immovable object. You know, speaking of that, we hear a lot of comparisons, and we're drifting a little between Zion and Charles Barkley. Now, if Zion ever becomes that, along with the explosiveness of his game, we could be talking about the most dynamic player of this decade. Okay, but okay. So to bring it to the present, uh, are you aware of any cards? Of the of this year, because it could only be this year, that have Zion Williamson in the background. I, I don't have, think that happens anymore. I don't. Or, think, or very, very rarely. I don't think that's happened yet. Or Luca, be, because Luca might happen. But I haven't. I don't remember hearing about Zion's it. Zion's not going to happen because he didn't come up till the end of the year. Yeah. So their photos are not going to have okay. him. So, but Luca will probably pop up in a couple photos in the very near future. But even so, I don't think there, there, there's been a greater. There's more staging, I think, yes. going on now than there than back in the day. They were just taking not publicity photos, but they were just taking you know action photos and and weren't as careful. And there's actually, well, there's actually reason for card companies to be careful. Uh, there there has actually been litigation, current and past, about other people being in photos who either they didn't have the rights to or didn't have permissions for. So it's sad that the world uh, looks at it that way, but that's, that's but the but you know in the NBA they've also evolved the game. You still have season tickets to the Mavericks. The game is not as tightly bunched as it used to be with all the three point shooting and all the spreading out the court. It is now hard. It is now you're not going to get as many fo- players usually on a card photo either. Well, there ought to be somebody guarding the person, you know, <laughs> you'd think. But, you know, like I say, if you're a post player, which also is an endangered species. But like I said, I think this is more of a, of a, uh, of a, of a basketball issue, which I don't think is happening as much. But I think it's very cool, and I really applaud what you're doing and what what ComC is doing through you to identify these. Because when you get back into the 70s and and the 80s, I think it's really cool. It's very cool. And even the 90s, that Google other card is like a 93, 94 card. That's a really cool card. And it's like, hey, we talked about that on some podcast. And if somebody had a bunch of them and they were a dollar card and they're selling them now for $5, wonderful. If that helps spear interest. And sales in the hobby, I'm all for that. Well, I, I love combo cards. I don't think they're, they shouldn't be worth as much as the main card, but, but when they're, they're almost like a bargain. You got, uh, if you have Manlin Mays together, it's not equal to the sum. It's maybe even half of what either one of them would be, hey. but it's still a really cool card. And what you're saying is a, a poor man's version of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're, that's, that's, oh, we didn't mention the, the Melendez brothers. Oh that's yes, I, actually, I was trying to avoid that, but that's a very. Well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> that was a very. We're not going to get into all the backstory. People can look at that, but the fact is, it's kind of um, interesting. I don't. I don't think it's. I, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, but it is kind of interesting that you don't have a wide angle shot that often, and to show show that that I, I don't think that was staged or planned. But it is interesting to know. If note it was that. staged or planned, why was it sitting for thirty years before somebody? Before noticed somebody it? knows, so they, they they kept the secret so well, Rich, <laughs> that the conspiracy couldn't. They could do it for twenty nine years, but not thirty. That's it for us. We are we are masked up, and we're going to demask here in a little bit. I know it's Rich. I can tell by his voice, and you can too. We've had a good time being safe and healthy, and still providing you hopefully with a, an enjoyable podcast. So we'll be back again tomorrow with another one, and enjoy your collecting and be safe. The man in the house of God. Man in the house of cards The man in the house of cards Is doing all right